Oh, hello campers. Dr. Dickey here. That's a neighborhood joke name. It probably doesn't mean what you think it means. Just my next door neighbor, a friend of mine, funny guy, gave me the name. The neighborhood picked it up, so I stuck with it. I thought it was funny, he thought it was funny. That's what I use. The purpose of this video is to document my attempt to recreate an antenna that was the brainchild and is now the business of uh, Callum uh, M0MCX in England, who has a company by DX Commander. That's the antennas that he sells are called DX Commander. Google DX Commander, look it up. Great antennas, seems like a fantastic guy. I haven't met him, but I'd love to one day, who knows. But uh, I wanted to take his concept and try and do it myself. I always like to do everything myself. This started off because I have some military radios, uh, PRC 320 and uh, 515, and I wanted a portable antenna that I could use for at least 40 and 20 meters, maybe 10 meters too. And I wanted to be able to do it portably without having to have an antenna tuner. So I came across DX Commander's web, uh, YouTube and website and read all about it, saw a lot of uh, the videos, and really got me intrigued. I tried to do it for this portable antenna, and it worked. It worked, and I'll, I'll do a video on that when I get it kind of tweaked up. And then I thought, well, why don't I try it at home? Why? Well, I've only been in ham radio for about eight years. I had a CB back in the 70s, before the craze, when you had to have a license and everything. Uh, and once the craze took off, there were just too many, I guess what you call trolls these days on the air. So I got out of that. I got into commercial radio. And I was a disc jockey for about 15 years, very successful. But I got married, and the disc jockey life is, uh, you know, let's say, unstable. So I got out of that transition into a new career. And about eight years ago, I still had the radio bug. So I said, well, I'll get into ham radio. I can do that. Got a ham radio, got an off-center fed dipole antenna. Uh, I think it was 45 feet, 90 feet. Got me 80, uh, 40, 20, 10, what I, what I wanted, plus a few others that I didn't really use that much. But everything I read said you got to be at least a half a wavelength off the ground, and certainly I was not for 80. It wasn't for 40. really wasn't even for 20. I should have been, but that was partially my fault. I was using a, a metal telescoping antenna pole for my center, and I'll, I'll show you why I, I kind of messed that up, I think. But anyway... I saw DX Commander's stuff and I thought, wow, that's a great idea. Let me try to do that at home. Now, I knew I had some old military fiberglass tent poles. They are about 44 inches long. I think it's supposed to be 48, but the last four inches is what goes into the next one, so you kind of lose that four inches. And I said, well, if I can go up about 10 meters, I should be able to get 40, 20, 10, and then 80, I can do an inverted L because I have a, another antenna that was, I had the post that was holding up one of the legs of my off-center fed dipole. So I said, wow, that's a great idea. I'm going to try to do that. So this video is to document my attempt to do that. Um, just, and also verify that it's not my idea. It's, it's Callum's idea, M0 MCX, DX Commander. If you want an antenna, go to DX Commander, vertical antennas. I'm sure I'll get one one day. Again, I just like to do things myself. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to be living here. When I move to my new place, when I retire, I will more than likely get a DX Commander and set it up and uh, try it out for myself. Okay, this is where the antenna is going to go. This is concrete. It's about a 50-pound bag of concrete that I put down in there. And then into that concrete is one of these. So it's well sealed down there into the concrete and that will serve as the base of the antenna okay and the antenna because it's a vertical it needs ground radials so for ground radials we're going to use that it's got six connectors ah. So to those six connectors, we're going to hook wire. I've got each bundle of wire is an eighth of the longest wavelength, 80 meters, an eighth of 80 meters, 10 meters. So each wire is 10 meters long. 
there is six wires in each one of these connectors, six connectors, so 36 wires, each one 10 meters long, will serve as the ground plane. Then, for the actual antenna, we, we have this. This serves as what you would call the drive plate. I guess would be the best way to say it, the drive plate. That's what drives the antennas is going to be. The antennas will be hooked to this with an 80, 40, 20, 10. They're going to be hooked to this plate. Then the coax in gets hooked to this plate through this pigtail and thus it drives the entire plate and the antennas radiate from that. All of them hooked together. And it works very well when I get it all hooked up. This is the old metal pole that I had my dipole on. And I kept it there for a couple of reasons. One is, attached to it were strips of copper, about four or five inches, uh, maybe even six inches, for the, feel, for the skin effect for lightning. And they went out in all directions in the backyard. And every six or seven feet, I drove down a 10-foot copper post and hooked that copper to it. So it's got a great lightning ground plane to it that I wanted to use hooking my coax to that. Coax will then come out of here, hook to here. That drives this plate. This plate drives all the antennas and everything hopefully works harmoniously. So why didn't I get all the way to the top? Well, this post has about four poles in it. Each one, of course, gets progressively smaller. Well, the smallest one, it would have been at the top. Each one of those is about 10 feet tall. It was about three feet down into the concrete. So the bottom was seven, and then there was three sets of 10. Um, so it should have been 37 feet, which would have been my 10 meters, 33 feet, 10 meters. But when I hooked it up, I guess the center pole fell down inside of it, and I, I never found it. I never could see it, so I never, I only had two more extensions on this, so it was about 25 feet, 26 feet maybe total. So I never got close to my uh, half a wavelength, even for 20 meters. And that's my own fault. Somehow I let that fall down inside of it. You would have thought when you collapsed it down that the poles would have been such that the bottom one uh, the, the smallest one would have stuck out of the top of the others, but it didn't, so I kind of lost that. So that's what we're going to do. Let me hook up the radials, and then I can start building the antenna. All right, well, I got the radials put in. These radials are all 10 meters. My backyard is not quite wide enough for 10 meters to go in every direction. But for the most part, they're not as straight out as you would expect, but they're mostly 10 meters all around. They pretty much cover my entire yard. I don't know if you can see them or not. To just about every corner of my yard. So I think that'll be good enough. Obviously I'm going to bury them. That is my UHF VHF antenna. And if, I don't know, you can't see it, but at the very top there, just at the bottom of the antenna, there is a pulley and that pulley has that line that goes down right there. That's going to be attached to that dog bone. That's where the 80 meter leg of the antenna is going to be attached to. So I can pull that up to get the L part out. And then if I need to shorten the antenna, I just bring it down and I can cut it and put it back up without having to do anything else. So that's going to be real nice. So this is where the antenna is going to go up tomorrow, hopefully. Um, I've got one of the um, guy wire systems right there. The other one is, is hooked up, uh, done with Pythagoras' the theorem. And if he's correct, then I should end up with some wires that are uh, up there at the 10 meter mark or so, not tight. Um, I can adjust them when they're up there, but loose enough to keep it from being able to fall over. I'll explain to you how I'm going to put the antenna up tomorrow when we do it. There was a problem with the audio here, so this is the cap that goes on top. That's the 40 meter shock cord that holds the antenna. 80 meter would just feed through it. These are the acrylic plates. They were 7 inch diameter, 8 inch thick that I use for guides for the antenna wires. Too flimsy, I'm going to have to get stronger plates in the future. Um, and then finally, the wire that I use for the antenna is a DX10 wire. At least that's what it was sold to me as. 
So here I am putting up the bottom three poles. The bottom post, of course, goes into that concrete. Um, and then these are, these are old military uh, tent poles made out of fiberglass. Pretty heavy duty. The bottom three then go into the guy system, the lower guy system. Then on top of it, six more poles have to be placed. They all have to be picked up and pushed up from the bottom, but the bottom being the top of the third pole of the bottom three poles. So here I am putting in the fifth pole of the six that have to go on top. That last pole going in was a real challenge, um, and I didn't record it because it was just too much of me uh, playing around and dropping the antenna and having to start over again. But I learned a lot of stuff, and once I got it all up with all six, I was able to adjust the guy wires on top, and now it's much easier to be able to get the antenna up. Okay, so... You can see this is the uh, antenna pole. It's up. There's the very top of it. I'll show you the piece that goes on the top. It's something you can get with the antennas. And you can see where the, uh, see if I can zoom in there. You can see where the 40 meters ties right there, just a little bit below the antenna. 80 meters goes looping through the top and then goes over. I'll show you. 80 meters goes up through the top way up there and then goes over and hooks up over there making the L and then the guys are to those palm trees and uh, to another place over here I've got to trim those palm trees down because they're pulling a little bit on it uh, and get it straightened up it needs to be pulled a little bit towards that palm tree but that's because the 80 meter antenna is pulling on it. But that is the antenna. You can see the uh, wires coming down for it through the plates and then hooking up to the drive plate and uh, the ground plate underneath of it. Okay, then after getting the antenna up, of course, the next thing is to measure the SWR on the bands. So this is Rig Expert using its ant scope program. Uh, gonna measure the SWR on the bands. First one is 80 meters. Measure it across the legal range, which is from uh, 3600 to 3800. And the SWR is a little higher than I would have liked, but I mean, it still starts off at around two and a half, dips down uh, to around two, just below two, maybe 1.97 or so. The dip was right where I wanted it once I added 45 inches onto the antenna. I don't know why it was 45 inches short. I made all the antenna links, cut them, I thought, about 5 inches long, maybe because of the inverted L, maybe because I did something wrong. I cut it, I mismeasured when I was doing it, but I ended up having to add 45 inches onto it. Fortunately for the 80 meter band, that's really simple. I just put that, uh, put it down from the uh, pulley that's on the, the uh, 2 meter band, antenna and just cut it and just add some to it and then put it back up. It was very, very simple. 40 meters from 7125 to 7300. And that would have been the worst. If I had had to modify the length of the antenna for uh, 40 meters, that would have been a huge problem because I would have had to take the entire antenna down because 40 meters is on the shock cord at the very, very top of the antenna. Fortunately, 40 meters came in just beautiful. It's below two to one across the entire band, so it's not a problem. Um, it, it, it came in just perfect. 20 meters, I did have to cut another. That's from 14,150 to 14,350. And I did have to cut five inches off. Now, I made all these about five inches extra long, so cutting five inches off, not a big surprise. But once I cut the five inches off, which was a bit of a challenge because I had to pull out two of the bottom, or at least one of the, the bottom posts of the top six that sit on top of the base three, I had to pull that bottom one out to be able to get to it. But once I did, I cut five inches off. It came in, it's just beautiful. It's less than two to one across the entire band. Came in just perfect. And then finally, there's 10 meters. That's from 28. 300 to 28, 700. 
10 meters, I took five inches off again. Like I said, I, I, I measured them about five inches extra long and turned out I should have just measured them exactly, except for 40 meters, came out perfect. So uh, 10 meters, I took five inches off. I probably should add another inch back on because with the five inches off, the dip now is a little bit higher than where it should be. Uh, even though it's very good, it starts off just a hair above two, two to one, but it ends uh, less than one to one and a half to one. So if I add about one inch to it, it ought to move that dip down and just have it perfect. So I probably will do that this weekend, but even the way it is right now, there's nothing wrong with those SWRs. Just uh, great SWRs for the antenna. Okay. That's the installation of my antenna. Again, it was made with fiberglass military tent poles. I believe you can get those from Go Vertical on eBay. I think that's who I got them from. And it took nine of them. They sell them in lots of eight, but it took nine to get up above 10 meters so I could get my 40 meter up there without having to loop it over or anything. But it's, uh, it, it seems to have worked great. I haven't had a chance to really get on the air and use it much because it is the middle of the summer and I'm not usually up late at night, which is when the bands are going to be the best. But I look forward to using it. The SWR looked great. Everything else looks great on it. And it seems like it's going to be just an excellent antenna. I hope that it is far superior to the off-center fed dipole that I took down. And even if it isn't, if it's as good as, that's good enough. It'll be easier for me to set this antenna up when I move to wherever the new location is. Thanks for watching.